finish up this side quest and head back to Lake Makalania. You'll battle the big gun Machina. It is weak to slow. You should have plenty of Electro Marbles to use for it. Once you destroy the Negator, bring in Waka and cast Thundaga a few times to beat the boss. After traveling with the snowmobiles, talk to Lena here and scout her for your Blitzball team. If you're low on Gil, you can go back to the inn for some extra. You'll now play Blitzball tournaments again for Return Spheres. You'll have to play two or three tournaments, play till you have seven Return Spheres. There are three different ways to do this. Most people will probably play three tournaments. You should be able to get it down to two tournaments if you have Lina level up during the first tournament. Get her stats high enough for you to use Napshot 3. The first tournament will tie Titus and Wedge for top score, and the third tournament will tie with Lina as well, totaling five return spheres for two tournaments. Now rejoice, there's no more Blitzball for the rest of this guide. Now confront Seymour at the Makalania Temple. Use Petrify Grenades or Stone Breath. Then Dispel. Talk and cast improvements before he summons Anima. Start taking him out with Waka and get the overkill. Make sure to get his common drop of two Black Magic Return Spheres. Optionally, he's a good farm for a four slot Silence Touch weapon. It's a huge help for farming items later on. If you don't get it the first time, load the autosave. You'll want this for Riku, Lulu, or Waka. Use the Black Magic Spheres to teleport Lulu and Kamari to the Flare Sphere Grid. Now that Kamari has the Aga spells, equip his Magic Halibur. Get past the Makalania Temple Trial. On your escape to Lake Makalania, get at least one sleeping powder for the upcoming boss. Just like the Seymour boss, start out with Petrify Grenades or Stone Breath. Use Sleeping Powder and take him out from afar with items and magic. You want to get this chest at the lake bottom. You can reach it after Yuno wakes up. Use the level 2 key sphere to break Titus into the strength sphere grid. Use the HP and strength spheres for empty gnomes. Once you reach the end, use the level 1 key sphere and replace it with a luck node. Soon enough, you'll be cast away on Beaconel Island. Go and assemble the team. Notable loot includes this level 2 key sphere and two teleport spheres by the sand trap. You can steal Sleeping Powder and Smoke Bombs to similar enemies as before. 
cactars appear here with a new rare steal of chocobo wings. You can steal shadow gems from the sandworms. They are weak to darkness. The giant flyers are weak to darkness, power break, and slow. Use a smoke bomb to hit it with darkness. This enemy is great for farming smoke bombs, you can easily get 99 of them in no time. With 20 smoke bombs, add Dark Strike to your Silent Strike weapon. Move on to the battle at home and do the chest quests. In the first room, grab the elixir and answer sorry on the bottom center, wait on the center right, and pardon dead center. You'll get a friend sphere. In the second area, the combination is 5633. Three. To get a special sphere, for the second chest, answer with the third, the fourth, the second, and then the first. You'll get a skill sphere. Now you can teleport Lulu to the Dispel Sphere Grid by using a Special Sphere and a Return Sphere. Have Waka join with a Friend Sphere. In the next cutscene area, grab the two key spheres. You'll now have two level 2 key spheres to break Auron into the Buster Sphere Grid. Use the remaining Strength and HP spheres to fill in empty nodes. Once you've reached Silence Buster, use a Teleport Spear to move Orin to haste and take him through the Strength Sphere Grid. Keep moving the story along and before you know it you'll beat the snot out of Evre. Get the overkill, and you'll have two more black magic spheres. Once you've crashed the wedding, go right into the sphere grid. Use the black magic spheres to send Titus to the Buster sphere grid and Riku to the Flare sphere grid. Now crash this wedding and run to the trial to regroup with Yuna. Use the HP sphere to fill the empty node next to Titus. After the fair trial, Yuna is alone in the Via Perifico. Run straight and take the glyph up to join with Arin. Use a skill sphere to get Yuna to the strength sphere grid.
Now join the rest of the team. Grab the white magic sphere next to Lulu. Touch these glyphs to unlock the area behind the gate. You get a black magic sphere next to the last glyph. Use it to send Yuna to the Buster Sphere Grid. Go to the unlocked area and open the chest. The skill sphere is of note. Now to leave and show Izaru how weak his aeons really are. Next up, you'll join the swim team. Make sure you have some phoenix downs. Everybody is OP, so just steal, 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 and know everything is weak to darkness. Once you've had enough stealing, Cross the invisible line to start the boss fight. Use two phoenix downs on it or just beat him straight on. I do whatever gives everyone experience. Optionally, you can farm the boss for a two slot stone touch weapon for Waka or Riku. If you have 60 petrify grenades, give it stone strike. It will almost guarantee a petrification hit. Get out of the water to rejoin the rest of the party. The second Seymour boss says hello as everyone but poor Luduki Mari checks out the save sphere. Optionally, this is a good spot to farm Mega Phoenix. It's a rare drop from the cannons. It took me about 40 minutes to farm 20. This was with 4x speed and frequent encounters. You'd use it to craft Auto Phoenix armor. It's too grindy for this guy, I'm only noting that it's possible. Now fight Seymour and have fun, or just let him get smacked. That will conclude part 3 of this guide. Now, you can run past everything until you've demolished Sin. But, in part 4, we will get access to the Monster Arena and explore just how powerful we can get before everything opens up after Xanarkin.